Nobody wakes up in the morning thinking, I'm going to go to a and &E today. Nobody knows. Nobody knows who it's going to be. Pediatric trauma call, 15 minutes. Code red, helipad response. You're having a heart attack. We want to be in and out of scan in the next 10 minutes. I can't feel any pulse. Reception, can I help you? Yeah, 24 hours, seven days a week. I love that question. What's your opening hours? St George's, London. One of the busiest and most advanced A&E departments in the world. Beautiful. It's as if we've done it before. We are there when awful things happen to pick up the pieces. We have a two-year-old who's kicked by the horse. We see the unpredictableness of what happens in life, and we're suddenly having to explain why it's gone wrong. I can't feel my left leg. You'll be OK. A place where life... Amy, selfie! Don't be low. Too slow. <laughs> Love. Such a big boy. I'm so proud of you. And loss. I'm still here. Unfold every single day. So we don't shake hands at this hospital, we fist bump. Can I have a fist bump? <laughs> All the patients you're about to see were treated in just one 24-hour period. Hello, darling. You genuinely do see the best of people in this job. You'll see strangers rushing to the aid of someone they've never met. You just see things that make you realise just how important the people in your life are and the people around you are. Emergency department, can I help? Oh, yeah, I'm in hospital. I had an allergic reaction. You are the third young man to have swallowed a pound coin in the last ten hours that I've been working. Can I please have a porter, please, to resource, please, for a transfer to X-ray? Thank you. How many more times do you think I can say please? Soby has been working as a registrar at St George's for the last two years. I knew from a very young age that I wanted to be a doctor. From a CT point of view, internally, everything's fine. When my parents moved to Tooting, I was six or seven. My mum was actually working at George's at the time. And I fell over and I hurt my wrist. And she brought me to George's. And I just remember being in the emergency department and thinking, this place is huge. And everyone just seems to know what they're doing. And everyone looks really busy. And it just looks like so much fun. <laughs> what have you done, Nick? Nick, don't touch the computer. It was terrifying, but exciting terrifying, because I thought, oh, this is, this is what I've been looking for. It made me want to want to learn more. This is to check how well your lungs are working. It's really important because your oxygen levels are a little bit low at the moment, although my parents tried to discourage me lots of times. I think they knew how much work it would involve, how much of my life I'd have to sacrifice, um, and how difficult emotionally it would be as well. Eight minutes. A 22-year-old cyclist is being rushed to St George's after a collision with a car on his way to work in South London. Hi, it's Liz. Can we book in an adult unknown male trauma, please? When you know that it's a cyclist that's coming in to resus, you have no idea what kind of injuries they're going to have because they can range from just little greys to 
life-changing, life-threatening injuries. Recess. Hi, Fahim. 22-year-old cyclist not wearing a helmet, um, bullseye the rear windscreen. OK, thanks, mate. If a patient has bullseye a windscreen, that is concerning in terms of head injuries because the potential for having an intracranial injury is really high because you think of the amount of force that you'd need to, to bullseye a windscreen and break the window. The man's family, including his cousin, have been informed of the accident. My mum called me and uh, at that time I was uh, in Wembley because I was studying and uh, she started getting emotional and she was like, um, I'd had a very bad accident, so we'll come to the a and &E in Tooting. Into number five, please, please. At that time, I just wanted to get there as soon as possible and see how bad the injury is and uh, hoping that he's fine. Consultant Fahim is leading the trauma team. Atar here is a 22-year-old cyclist, about 9.40. He was involved in a collision with a uh, car. He's um, shattered the entire back windscreen with his head and upper body. He'd been unconscious initially. He has no recollection of uh, the collision. Uh, he doesn't know what day of the week it is. He's got a laceration on the inside of his right ear, laceration on, on his neck as well. Let's start with the primary survey. Any pain here? Do you remember what happened? If they are presenting with certain symptoms, so if, if their conscious level is reduced, if their memory is impaired, or you know they, they've got problems with their vision or anything like that, the most significant head injury would be a bleed in the brain. CT is ready for him? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah OK. Attar will be taken for CT scans to assess whether he sustained a serious head injury and any unforeseen damage to his neck, spine or internal organs. Any bleed that you have in the brain is damaging the surrounding tissue and it means that the surrounding tissue aren't getting enough oxygen and so it leads to death of the, the healthy tissue. So the quicker you can find out what's going on, the quicker you can do something about it because if you leave it, then the consequences of that are, are very severe. Okay, so we are going to shift you on the CT trolley, okay? Okay, at the count of three. Yeah. One, two, three. Brilliant. Excellent. It's been nine minutes since 22-year-old Attar arrived at St George's after crashing headfirst into a car windscreen whilst riding his bicycle to work. Okay, we're going to do a quick CT scan of your head and your neck, okay? Keep You're your right arms across your chest. All you need to do is just keep really, really still for us, OK? Doctors are concerned his loss of memory may mean he has a serious brain injury and are taking CT scans. His family are travelling to St George's from their home in South London. I'm very close to Atat. I've known him since I was born. We came to the UK in 2003 with the family. So after two years, he came over. He was living with us, so we had that relationship bond going on. We were able to do anything really together and share a lot of memories. He was sharing the same room as us, so it was a bit like <laughs> I didn't have that much space to do whatever I want. Just need to see. I, I think he might have some fracture yeah. on the face here. Yeah. We're riding bikes together, going football together. We used to wrestle a lot at that time because we used to watch um, WrestleMania one time. 
our families, they went out for a couple of hours. So we started doing wrestling and he literally hit his head on the window and the window broke. And then he was literally, half of the body was out. So I had to pull him back up. Done? Yeah. It wasn't even the injury that was the biggest problem. We were thinking of an excuse to tell our parents. When they came back, we told them that um, we slipped and uh, we just hit, uh, Atta hit his head. One, two, three. I've got a couple of cousins, but Atta's probably the closest one to me. I don't really see it as a cousin relationship because um, I can share mostly everything with him. It's, it's like a brotherhood. Attar will be taken to recess whilst doctors await the full reports from his scans. I've been in the hospital yet, and I think I must have seen about three or four people, actually about five people with their leg copied. Hello. OK. Yeah. I've come to bother you. Um, I'm just waiting for an X-ray. I presume I just... I was told just to wait, so I'm just waiting. There are about nine patients in front of me, so... <laughs> sorry. sorry. As long as I'm on the list, you I don't mind. You definitely are. OK, thank you very much. No problem. Ninety-one-year-old Peter has come to A&E after suffering a fall three nights ago whilst at home with his wife. I'm extremely ancient, and when ancient, and when you get ancient, annoying things happen. Because I practically need an ear trumpet. I've got one, but I never wear the damn thing, and that's very annoying for people. They have to not shout at me, but um, sometimes I get the wrong end of the stick, if you know what I mean. <laughs> now you play with your toy. I don't have one of those. I should have brought a book. I forgot to bring a book. Peter. Peter. You're up. What? Oh, okay. I mean, taken in a chariot. Oh, my God. Okay. If you hold on to that. Thank you. <laughs> Best of luck to you. I say I'm sorry. Where are we? Oh, there we go. God, going backwards at speed. I don't know. I'm being charioted. Hey, thank you very much. Very kind. Oh, my God. Las Vegas, thank you very much. <laughs> what are we doing? Give my seconds of Who would think just falling over in a bathroom was going to cause so much grief? I'd like you to transfer yourself onto the couch. Yes, yes. The carer, she rang up my daughter in France, who in turn rang up friends of hers in Wimbledon, who came over and saw me and said, oh, my God, he looks awful. I'm going to get the ambulance. And I was carted off to St George's. I understand you've already been to see your family doctor. Is I that went, I, what I was an idiot fool. I slipped in the, our bathroom on Thursday night. It's my right leg, and it's sort of... The main pain seems to be sort of in the crutch direction. When I was born, I don't remember much what happened, but when I got to be... to, to realise where I was and what I was, I was extremely happy in a lovely house in Lahore in the Punjab with a beautiful garden and two nice Scotty dogs in India. OK, now I'm going to push against you. Now, now keep your knees straight, Mr Latham. No, I'm trying to. You push against me, push up. For the first, what, seven years of my life, you couldn't have a more sort of luxurious, very comfortable life. How does that feel? Particularly. Oh, <laughs> OK, <laughs> right, OK. And after the first seven years, when that had, I mean, a big upheaval, I was sent home to go to boarding school. In those days, no airlines, of course. Two-day train journey to get to Bombay, to get to the p and steamer for a three-week voyage via the Suez Canal to get to England. And then England was a bit strange the first time. 
As well as carrying out x-rays, medical staff will test for any underlying health problems that may have caused Peter's fall. What we're going to do, we'll take some blood tests, and we're going to do a tracing of your heart, and I'm going to speak to my colleagues, the physiotherapist, to assess your function. OK, so I'll be back in a second. And during the war, I was a dispatch rider in the Home Guard. So when... So, so when road sort of like, Mr. Man, you've seen Dad's Army, haven't you? Yeah, well, sort of, I was a Dad's Army dispatch rider sending messages for the equivalent of Mr. Man wearing here and there in North Devon. We're off. Oh, look at this. <laughs> I'm sorry that you have to do this. My God, where are we going? We are going for your X-ray. In those days, they, they took away all the signposts in case the Germans came. Main X-ray. So you, you did sort of have to think about where you were going. And so, I, But I got home in the end. Now, what have I got to do? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, it's ridiculous, isn't it? You know, I've been watching everybody bustling up and down the corridor and walking nicely, and I need two legs. They say that we evolved from them, don't we? We're well, no. not too sure. I'm not too sure. Why do you sure. think they look like us? Because I think they're just look, another species look. of us. We're all just different species look, of us. Wait, I'll make I'll make that look like me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, afternoon, brothers. Well, this is not watching Open City. <laughs> I'm watching Casual, you know. All right, there. Yeah, Go yeah. Dirty. What's wrong? My head is so sore. Sore. Oh, no. yeah. It's sore for a few days. We don't get it all sorted out. So. I know it would be sore for a few days. I know I'm a bit stupid, but I ain't that stupid. You're not stupid at all. 26-year-old Emma has come into A&E with Mum Tracy and Dad Stuart. I've got a fleece in the car cos it's covered in blood. She's cut her head open after suffering an epileptic seizure. Hello, how are you? Hi, Emma. My name's Gaulia, I'm one of the nurses. I need to just check your blood pressure and everything. And I need to take some routine bloods. Is that OK? OK. Yeah? How's your head? Um, it was a little bit in pain when I was in the ambulance, but um, it's fine now. We got the call to say Emma had been out with her group from the centre in town and that we, that she had had a fit and banged her head on the pavement and that they had called an ambulance. Emma doesn't like going to A&E at all. So, um, I'll do bloods first. I'll do um, this one. You get that call and immediately you, it's like dread because you know how Emma's going to be. Do you want my needles, do you? I hate needles. Oh, do you? OK, I'm sorry. <laughs> I hate needles. Necessary evil. It's like, oh, my God, here we go again. Nine times in one year, it's... it's you think, no, please, not again. Oh, no, I'm not going to put it in there, are you? Yeah, it's a little one. That's a little one, butterfly. One, yeah. Oh, no. Go on, I it'd be quick. Know, don't Just don't quickly. Don't no, Emma. I don't know. I don't Emma. know. Emma. Emma. Emma, Emma, come on. Be really quick. You can hold on to your mum's hand and look the other way. I'll keep your hand down here. And we'll do it really fast. Don't cry, darling. Come on. No more tears. It wasn't until, really, she was 10 months old that I noticed a difference, that she wasn't doing what other 10-month-old babies were supposed to be doing. Emma, are you getting yourself in a state? When children are a certain age, they transfer toys from one hand to the other, and Emma didn't ever do that. She would practically roll over to get it with her left. They did a CT scan and found out. It's a form of cerebral palsy, and, but she is, it's, the condition is called right-side hemiplegia, and it, they say it's like an adult that's had a stroke. Come on, no more tears. Where a normal child at, say, 10, 12, they're doing everything for themselves. Emma's, Emma's not, even now, you know, she can't cut her own food up. We have to do that for her. Do you want me to get you a drink? Oh. Do you want a drink? She goes to a centre three times a week. I mean, she has a carer 
come in and, and to help her get ready and things like that. It is hard. Good big girl. Doctors will now assess Emma's wound and whether she'll need surgery. I really would like to go to Cahoots at some point. What's Cahoots? It's like this new underground bar that's in an old... Oh, as soon as people tell me underground bars, I'm like... Yeah. As in, like, in an old underground station. Oh! Yeah. Oh, OK. That's what I mean by not underground. Not, like, not underground. No. Like, no. I'm not really that I'm bad not that cool. cool. <laughs> you know those tests that you take at school, the ones that tell you what kind of career you should follow? Apparently, I should be a party planner. Um, <laughs> didn't go... <laughs> I didn't go down too well at the time. <laughs> As you become more senior, I remember being an SHO, you think, OK, well, I can just ask my registrar and it'll be fine. Um, but now I'm the registrar and I'm the one that's answering those questions, so that, that is quite daunting. He's waiting for the consultant radiologist to let him know what the um, formal report of her scan is. You have to think, you know, five things at the same time and make sure that you know what's going on in the department and also make sure you know what's going on with your patients and... Um, it is a little bit scary stepping up. So, Arthur, what we'll do now is get an X-ray of your chest and your pelvis. OK. It's in a moment. I'm going to ask you to take a deep breath and hold it, all right? OK, X-ray. 22-year-old Attar has had an emergency CT scan after crashing headfirst into a car whilst riding his bicycle. Initial scan results indicate severe facial fractures. Doctors are now carrying out x-rays and further tests to see if he has any other internal injuries. Do you now remember what day it is? No? Do you know which month is it? No? Year? Not really. OK. Atha, I'm going to scan your belly, OK? So you feel a gel. Uh, can you yeah, keep your... Hand, arms by your side. OK, so you'll feel a bit cold now. Arthur's family had the same route to, the, to my parents. From Pakistan, they moved to Germany, and then both of them have moved to this country as well. The reason they, I think, moved to the UK was education and uh, the community. When, when Atta came over from Germany to the UK, he could only speak um, German and Urdu. And uh, I think uh, people people pick on you if you can't speak the language. In the beginning, yeah, he's like, I don't want to stay here, I want to go back to Germany. When he came over, I could speak English properly, so I was able to help him. It took him a couple of months to learn English and us to help him make a lot of friends. OK, so we'll wait for the radiologist to report the images, OK? And then take it on from there. I believe your relatives are outside, so I'm going uh, to speak to them. Is that OK? Atar's dad is the first of the family to arrive at St George's. Atar uh, Anjum, are you alaikum. I'm Dr Nanjani, one of the doctors here. अभी हमने इनका स्कैन निकाला है सर का और फेस का और गर्दन का तो आपको बताते हैं स्कैन में अगर कुछ आता है आई मीन अभी भी थोड़ा वो कंफ्यूज है आपको आना है आतर योर डैड सी It's a big sacrifice, you know, and moving to London just for the sake of the family's members and uh, for the sake of the children's education. They had to work a lot and uh, be financially stable to be able to move to the UK. At that time, they were very young as well. I don't know if I could do that. Boot is going to be done. Boot is going to be done. Boot is going to be done. Don't worry. Boot is going to be done. Doctors will keep Attar under constant medical observation 
until they receive the full report of the CT scans. Only then will they be able to fully assess whether the injury to his head could be potentially life-changing. An hour ago, 91-year-old Peter came to St George's after suffering a fall at home three nights ago. <laughs> what news? Medical staff are taking blood tests to determine whether a health problem could have caused him to fall over. I hope I haven't damaged it by sort of creeping around on the frame because I have a lot of work to do. Yes. What, was, what did you do when you were working? What was your job? When I was working? Yes. I was in India, shipping, 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 shipping agents. After the war, I didn't want to stay in England. I only really wanted to go abroad somewhere. Okay, if you keep your arm nice and straight, OK? Yes, absolutely. Straight, straight, straight. I was accepted to join the shipping agency department in India. I mean, tea was an enormous, enormous mm. cargo going, I mean, from India to Europe. Do you live by yourself? No, no, I've got my wife, but unfortunately, I mean, I'm the carer for my wife. There weren't many unattached English girls who came out. So there were, but there were a great many Indian and Anglo-Indian. She was the hostess with the mostess. And I happened to fly Air India International, coming home on leave. And there was Marlene. She was a very, very, very bright spark. No doubt about that. And she did have another boyfriend, which I had to see off, I mean. Mind you, well, my mother, I may say, was not over keen on my marrying what in those days was called an Anglo-Indian. But I couldn't see any harm in that at all. And I think Marlene's mother wasn't particularly keen on <laughs> marrying me. But anyway, we managed to do it. I think probably our really happiest time was holidays. He had one little girl. Paula was a very determined. And my daughter's also got a, a business she's running in, in, in um, France, so she certainly can't leave very often. Knock, knock. Hello. Hello, Peter. How are you? Well, I don't know. I think I'm sure. doing all right. You must need to get rid of me soon, I think. Oh, no, we'll keep you a little bit longer. Oh. <laughs> what <laughs> have I got to do now? Well, my name's Meg. I'm one of the physiotherapists. Oh, yes. <laughs> very useful. Yeah, we are very useful. Yeah, don't be, come there's on, no need so to be what, frightened. So what can I do for you? <laughs> my job is to sort of see how you are on your feet and see if we can make your walking any easier. It might take a little bit of work to get you back to the point where you are walking sort of back, normally. back normally. That's why I've had all these x-rays and things, I think. Yes. So I understand you live with your wife, is that correct? Oh, of course, yes. But the trouble is that my wife has this, you know, oh, most you know, ter terrible thing, right? Have you heard of normal pressure hydrocephalus? I have, yes. Well, that's it. So it makes mobility very difficult. Marlene started to having a lot of pain when she was trying to walk. It's excess water on the brain, which doesn't sound very nice. Uh, and in order to drain away the excess water, you have to have what's called a shunt put in your scalp, which did work for a while, but I think is now beginning not to be as effective as it should be. It's a bit depressing. It looks to me that this, uh, you know, there's not much chance of Marley really getting better. So I am the carer. I mean, you know, she can't do very much at all because her balance is so bad. So I'm the one that needs two feet because I have to do everything. Poor Marlene, I mean, there's very little she can actually do. I mean, the heart is willing, but the body isn't. And comprehension is not as good as it was. I mean, not bad, but remember seeing her 20 years ago, but not yesterday. We have to get you back on yours. Yes. Okay. Please. I'm much more worried about my wife than me. There we go. Just take a seat for me. A and E. Ah. Oh my God! You're shaking. Oh. Yes, my arms, my body's hurting me. There's so much pain I'm in. I'm shaking with pain. 
Why don't you sit in one of them? If I sit down, it hurts. If I stand up, it hurts. Yeah, but why don't you sit on and the then, wheelchair? Then my legs go and I wind up on the floor. <laughs> Set of random questions now to find out. Do you have? Oh my god! That's the second time I've done that today. Oh my lordy! <laughs> Twenty-six-year-old Emma suffers from cerebral palsy and epilepsy. She's come to A and E after falling and hitting her head during a seizure. But I got really tired tonight, though. Yeah, so I'm getting better. Didn't I? Do you know what? Maybe. Wait, you will. Don't tell me what to do. I'll tell you what to do. You will. Shut up. Oi. Don't go speak to your fanner like that. Emma is... She can be funny. She's got a good sense of humour. Oh, shut up, man. Wait, don't do that. She's got a lot of common sense that she doesn't give herself credit for, and sometimes you have to reinforce that. Just some more water, please. I'll throw it all over you. See you later. With the cerebral palsy and and the with the epilepsy, because hers is not controlled with the medication all the time, you just don't know when it's going to happen. Doctor Rohan has come to assess Emma's head injury. Hello, my name's <laughs> Rohan. One of the doctors. <clears throat> Just come by because I've had a brief look through the notes. Okay. I'd like to find out a bit more about okay. what's been going on and have a look at your head effects. Okay. Yeah, you literally fell on your head, didn't you? I mean, you oh, fell... I went smack <coughs> like that, and then as soon as I got up, I was awake again. Yeah, okay. She's got the uncontrolled epilepsy, so she has these, you know, sometimes she'll be sitting there, it might just be eye flickers, or, but sometimes she falls, and if you're not there to grab her quick enough, she. Falls down flat. Just follow my finger yeah. in your eyes. Following my fingers. Okay, that's fine. And big smile. <laughs> A friend said to us that special parents get special children, but uh, you don't feel like that at the time. Just relax, Charles. Any pain in your mouth? No. Let me move it. From that moment on, you know you're not going to have the normal. So, and that's when, you know, your life changes because... <sighs> I can't do this. She came out of me, so... <sighs> it's... Did I do something wrong? But everyone says, no, you didn't. It's just one of those things, you know. It's heartbreaking. Just come down a little bit. That's it. And then you hit, when you put your head oh. back, it's resting. Sorry, I'm sorry. Keep still, keep still. Oh, oh my God, I can't. No, you've got to Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Come on, Come on. Come on. Come on. What's the matter? <laughs> You do try and, and have as normal a life as possible, but you know it's different from what I, you know from what your friends' children are. So you, it is hard. Sometimes it is hard. Come on, you hold my hand and rest your Got to get it done, sweetie. Always, you don't want to stay in. Do you? In day to day life, I think you get a protective shell and you try and bounce a lot of things off rather than absorbing things. You 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 do become hard, I think because that's how you survive. I'll be back in one second, OK? No problem. <laughs> <clears throat> Doctors are concerned that Emma's distress could trigger another seizure and need to find an alternative plan to treat and seal her wound. That's the I want, and that's the I get. Doing your job for you. Yeah, I want. <laughs> Going to see um, Carly Minogue next Sunday. Let's come back quick. Did, when did you put that a while ago, didn't you? Oh, no, that yeah, was... Oh, my friend um, got free ticket. That's the Donna, yeah. My oh. son used to go and see her every year. He loves Kylie. Yeah, he used to go with her. He's got quite a few gay friends where he works, and they all love Kylie. <laughs> yeah, so he goes with... They go with him. He goes with them. Ah! 
Don't pull faces like that, for God's sake. Ooh. 08.45. Thank you very much. Bye. It's my lucky penny. Is it? Yeah. I, do you mean to leave it there? Is that where you leave it? Yeah. I find, I'm sorry, I, I have... Um, Magpie. I am a magpie for, for, um, <coughs> for money. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, what is it? It said pick up a pen, pick up, yeah, pick a penny up. All day long, you get good luck. Uh, Pass it on to your friend. Your good luck will never end. Is that true? There you go. There you go. I'll get it. Earlier today, Attar collided headfirst with a car while cycling to work. He did have loss of consciousness and was amnesic to events. We've done the C-spine CT. Doctors have now got the full report from his CT scans. Thanks very much. Bye. So, um, Attar has got a fracture here. So I'm going to involve the maxillofacial doctors. And as far as the radiologists can see the head, the head looks OK. They are going to look at the neck as well, but we don't suspect any neck injuries. So um, obviously, you'll be staying in the hospital for some time. had significant force to, to fracture your face, you're always worried about injuries to the back of the eye and to the, to the nerves that supply the eye. Some people can lose their sight completely and lose, lose the eye completely as well. The rest of Attar's family and cousin Musawa have arrived in Rhesus. Yeah, yeah, it's like, I'm not so good in my eyes. I don't want to hear the they're very proud of uh, Rata. He's he's got a qualification in biomedical science. He was in his final year, and uh, he's also doing um, community work. My parents moved over here when I was two from Sri Lanka. My mum's a scientist. She works for cancer research, so she came over for her PhD. The way that my parents brought us up, it was you should always look after the people around you and you should always take care of the people around you and, you know, put them first before yourselves. And I think that applies to work and to my personal life as well. OK, so I'm just going to have a little clean-up of your wounds, all right? I can't promise that it's not going to sting, I'm afraid. No matter what's going on, no matter, you know, all the issues that you have, you put them aside and you go to work and you give the people that you see the best that you can because that's what they deserve. They shouldn't have anything less than that. But a patient's journey is, you know, longer than the four hours that they're here in their department. I'm going to sit the bed up just to see that you're all right, you're not feeling too dizzy, and then we'll probably take you over in a wheelchair. Okay. Is that all right? Just go nice and slowly. Attar will be admitted to hospital, where specialist surgeons will prepare to carry out surgery to his face. to resus, where doctors will now sedate her so they can stitch her head without causing her any distress. Are you here? Yes. Okay, so Ashley's going to be looking after you from now on. Hiya. See you later. Lovely, thanks Bye. very much. Best of luck. The doctor's going to try and sort out your head and give you a little <coughs> bit of sedation to make it less stressful for you. That's the plan, isn't it? Yeah. All right, how are you feeling otherwise? I'm cool. All right, Good. Okay. You hope she's going to have a fulfilled life as possible. 
and you try and make life interesting for her. Got nice blue eyes, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> like her dad's. Hey, look. In the past, we've always gone on family holidays and things like that because you don't know what's in the future, so you try and cram as much in as you can. I'm going to be with you all the time. Yeah. <gasps> Just close your eyes and see if you can go off to sleep. You go with the good, if you like, and you make the most of it because that's how you survive. It's what you do. You know, I brought her into the world, so I get on with it. You're the mum. Happy. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's all done, darling. Oh, look at that. A lovely job. Lesser people might, might have broken their marriage up, but us, it pulled us together. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just gonna go now. Take care, Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Take your time. Take your time. Yeah. Take your time. It's all done now. No pain. It's all finished. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> X-ray, straight. An hour and a half ago, 91-year-old Peter had X-rays on his leg, pelvis and hips following a fall. Medical staff now have the results. Hello, you're back again. I think I've had everything done, haven't I? No, there's no broken bones in your hip or your pelvis. That's fine, so that's good news, isn't it? Isn't that good news? Old age is, I mean, inevitable, but a nuisance. Oh, look at that. I mean, what does one do? Has a blinking ear trumpet. The eyes are not as good as they were. So when you step forward with your right foot, take the weight through the walking stick, see how that goes. And uh, now, of course, this thing walking is not as good as it was. You wouldn't use it with two hands at no, once. No, I know. No, you so can't we won't use try it. that. So I think what uh, that means is that we might have to keep using the frame. Okay. I can't walk up the road in a, with a frame. You ring up anybody to ask for information. They all say, can you give us your date of birth? And I say, well, if I must, I will. But I hope you're sitting down. Now, where are left and left, right, left, to right? To the right. Left and right? To the right, yep. Oh, X-ray, I don't want to go back there. No, we don't need to go back there. You know, with a dog, one always had to walk. I always had dogs, I always walked. They wouldn't like this. Round we go. Well, I got my French dog. Yep. I know he's an English dog, because I got him in Somerset and gave him, you know, the wire-haired Dax. And he is the most beautiful one we've ever had. He's got a marvellous nature. What's his name? His name is awfully French. It's Harry. Harry. <laughs> Peter will be taken to the clinical decision unit whilst doctors await the full results of his tests. Initially, doctors were concerned about my memory because I didn't remember anything. And then they told me that I have had some injuries on my cheekbone, which needed fixing. And also the doctors were worried about my sight at that time. Itself was quite surprised how quickly and how well I've recovered from that, so it's quite nice. After when I got home from the hospital and stuff, my mom was very worried about me just taking very easy on me and not letting me do anything. Um, 
as mums do, so, um, you know, getting food ready cooked for me was nice. Um, there's a few positives I've gotten out of it. Um, and that is for me to sort of remember to always be the, on the safe side and always wear a helmet. And it's also just made me realise how lucky I actually was on that day. I was well looked after at A&E, and I owe Marlene's carer a big debt for actually having the foresight to ring up my daughter. So, I mean, that was very lucky. Life with Marlene, I mean, very lucky. I couldn't have had a better wife. I think I've had a pretty touchwood good life. Hello, St George's. Pediatric trauma, APA, seven minutes. It was a normal day, phone rang. She just said, get down the road, your, your son's being hit by a motorbike. Okay. Jack? Did that hurt, Jack? It's just really difficult to predict how that brain and that patient is going to be able to cope with that injury. Thank you.